travel and things in association with rugged wear, real people, real clothing, real solutions presents in conversation with. I am your host, David Batsafin, and I'm very pleased to welcome as the first guests of the season for 2023, the uh, co-authors of a brand new book that is Roger Stewart and Marion Whitehead. In fact, the book did come out last year, but it's just been trying to get this all together. Um, firstly, good morning. Welcome to both of you. But before I say hello officially, I must show you this picture. I was trying to do research this morning on your book, and my executive assistant decided that, no, you can't read the book. It's very useful to lie on. So that's where your book was first thing this morning, under my cat. <laughs> Good morning to both of you, Roger and to Mary. Good morning. Welcome morning, to David. conversation with. Morning, Roger. Morning, David. Um, firstly, talk to me. Let, let's start, ladies, first, if you don't mind, Roger. Marion, tell us a bit about your background and, and why you got involved on this project. Well, David, I'm actually a journalist by training, and uh, I've worked in travel for quite a while. I was assistant editor at Getaway Magazine, and um, after I left there, I did a lot of freelancing, and, and a lot for Country Life magazine. And along the way, I kept coming across this fascinating person called William Birchall. And he was a great intrepid traveler way back in the early 1800s. He was in South Africa from 1810 to 1815. And he did this amazing trip in an ox wagon from Cape Town all the way up to Litakun in the hinterland and then took a long circuitous journey back to Cape Town <laughs> via Grafrenet and the Fish River Mouth and all along the coast. And, you know, he's a fascinating figure, so he captures your imagination. I mean, he has this small Englishman, he, no taller than me. I'm only five foot four in, in the old um system and um uh, he's this buckhut englishman who lands in cape town <laughs> gets off the ship and announces he's going to travel into the hinterland to unexplored places to collect plants animals and to meet and get to know people from different cultures i mean this was way out of line mm. for, for the locals in cape town and and they were poo-pooing this Bakhat Englishman, you know, and uh, he'd never camped outside before in his life, and here he was going to set off in an ox wagon, which he designed himself and had custom built, and go into the hinterland on his outward journey, which he wrote about. He traveled with the missionary convoy as far as Clarkstrom, and then went on to Litakun, the capital of the Bachapin nation, and from there, he traveled all on his own with his um, Khoi Khoi staff. And it was unheard of at that time, but he was very open-minded. So as a journalist writing articles on, on interesting places to travel, I'd come across Birchall. I mean, most most people traveling South Africa have, have come across him in one mm. way or another. There's Birchall's Zebra, Birchall's Kukul. They just um, don't realize it at Birchall's the end of the day, Pulsa, Mary. Yeah, and and a lot of plants bear his name as well. Birchelia bubalina is is one example of um. It's it's the wild pomegranate tree. It's the only I'm going tree to, in its genus. Marion, I'm going to stop you there because otherwise yes. this conversation is going to be you and me. And I see Rogers left the building, and I don't want him to. <laughs> Roger, so, you're still there. I've got hold of Roger to tell me about Birchall because he's the South African expert. Well, so when I was that. writing these articles, Roger's mm. been researching Birchall for more than 15 years now. So Th this so I know. Ask and ask him was, how he got into Birchall. Well, I'm, a, I'm about to uh, because I was saying to him before you joined us this morning that this is a really old school looking book. It's got a proper hardcover um, it's got a beautiful uh, front cover because if you take off that, um, it just ends up looking uh, like that. 
it, that in fact could be a research book, but it's not because the, the cover changes it. Roger, this is a project that, um, if the press release is to be believed, took you somewhere in excess of 15 years on and off. Um, yeah. As a Gemini, I, don't, I want instant gratification. If I'm going to write a novel, it's going to take me 17 minutes, and that's it, irrespective. How do you stick at something for 15 years? What made him so exciting for you? Well, David, it, it started with, with a problem. I was collecting the maps of all the early travelers, and I couldn't get hold of Birchall's map. Uh, the reason was that only 750 copies were ever printed of that, of the first volume that had his, had his map. And uh, <clears throat> I eventually got a, uh, got a facsimile copy, managed to get hold of, of his book and of his map, and started to read his book because my initial interest was the map itself because mm -hmm. it had some very interesting features. And when I started to read the book, I became absolutely fascinated by this multifaceted person and the beautiful English prose, the wonderful art, his descriptions of plants, people, animals. It was absolutely stunning. I, when I, I remember when I was reading it, saying to my wife, this should be mandatory uh, uh, reading for everyone who, who goes, who matriculates in English. They should at least read, uh, read at least part of it. And I became really fascinated. And I eventually got hold of the of, of an original map, and that satisfied me. And then when I looked at it in a lot more detail, I found the map itself extraordinarily interesting. And then what became – and then I did actually start writing. Not I'm not a Gemini. I'm a Taurus. Mm -hmm. But I generally am also rather impatient. But I did, I did write an article on him uh, in uh, 2012. That was 10 years ago. Uh, together with uh, Brian Warner, an astronomer, and we just reminded people about Birchall. And the whole emphasis was, was really about his book. And uh, obvious to me, the book ended at the outward part of his journey. And uh, I then worked with someone who was doing a PhD on Birchall at, in the Department of English at one of the universities. And I eventually persuaded her that this was not the right medium for her to do what she did, and that was Sue Buchanan. And she wrote a book on Birchall, writing on what I was not interested in, which was what was known, because I'd already covered a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And that left the gap. What about the two years, uh, almost three years, sorry, that he spent getting back to Cape Town? And there, were, there was information on the map, but the map wasn't really very helpful because some of the stations that he stayed at, he called them stations, his campsite, had names that had no geographical meaning. For example, Horses Grave. So where's Horses Grave? It's not anywhere in South Africa. Well, it is in South Africa, but not under that name. Uh, that's near Phillipstown, by the way. But we, uh, I then started to get into the whole issue of what can we find out about this return journey? And uh, went up to Witts University, where there is a transcription of all his letters. So I went through all his letters. He was a very meticulous man. Every time he wrote a letter, he kept a copy. And those copies have survived. And those were and in the, that was in the days before digital. There were no emails. Before digital and, even, no, and, and also before carbon paper. <laughs> you had to write it out twice. No. This, this man, again, I'm going to stop you there for a moment, if I may, Roger, um, and come back to you, Marion. Your involvement in this, um, because the book is meticulously, I'm just opening it one particular page, it's meticulously put together. There are beautiful drawings. Um, I love this um, April Fool's paintbrush lily. Um, what was your exact involvement? Did you do all the writing? And did Roger do all the sort of research or was it split 50-50 or 60-40 or 70-30? Well, as you know, Roger's been at it for more than 15 years. For me, it's been a lockdown project. Ah, Roger okay. asked me to come on board to help with the writing. Um, he's he's very academic and his style is quite dry and factual. You know, Birchall went from A to B and he did this and he found that. Yeah. And so my job was to write it in an interesting, readable way. Sort of anecdotal and, almost. Yes. And, yeah. you know, 
we we discovered all sorts of interesting bits of information, but you've got to dig for that kind of thing. Mm. And Rog is very good at digging in archives and and finding stuff. And and he discovered an old sketchbook of Birchall's in the National Library, for instance, that nobody kind of had looked at for how many hundreds of years. This is and... amazing that this information actually still exists, Roger, and nobody with the, you know until this. I'm just hoping, as you were saying, Marion. That it hasn't been looked at for for hundreds of years. I'm hoping that this book doesn't suffer the same fate. And somebody puts it in a drawer and goes, "Yes, we'll add it to our Birchall's collection," and nobody ever sees it again. Now, well, fortunately, the book is selling well, Good. and I've had some people buy multiple copies for gifts um, when they're visiting friends mm. or as, you know over Christmas as well. Yeah, and so that's going well. But it's, also, it's, I've got more um, plant knowledge than hmm. Roger. Okay. I'm a keen gardener. I'm a member of the Botanical Society and have been for many years. So, um, those boxes, like on on um, the white paintbrush lily, hmm. um, that that was my idea, and I've kind of compiled those. And the Plants Africa website has been very useful. Hmm. Um, that, that also, you know, if, if you have a look, so and you know, the, the, the timelines have, mm. having come from a journalistic background, that, I was going to say, your, was, your was time at Getaway well. and at Country Life, um, show in this, in this work because it reads like these could almost be articles in either of those magazines. Um, so well, I did you. articles about Birchall's yeah. travels in, in, in sections. Where relevant, to, uh, where I could sell to to country life yeah. or, or get away. I mean, there's a Birchall's four by four trail you probably know about, um, Katot Maya mm -hmm. at um, Paul Petersfontein. Okay, these, um, you know, these are names that I don't think regular South African travellers ever ever know or ever get to hear of. And and Roger, you were saying that you know you had to delve into a lot of archives. I know that you. I know that a, a cartographer is somebody who draws maps, but now you collect maps. So what what do you call somebody who collects maps? A map collector. <laughs> I, walk, <laughs> and, me, I walked into that and, one, didn't and, I? <laughs> and to confuse you, map collector is two words, but map seller is one word. So. <laughs> <laughs> but now what? But now I, I, I was a map collector, okay. and that, that was my real interest. Yeah, because I was really interested in the early exploration of of the Cape, and that was really a period from seven, more or less seventeen fifty till about eighteen twenty. Yeah, and so that was a really fascinating period. So I tried to get hold of all of the maps of all the okay. people who'd ever travelled there. Because I always think it was people with huge, if you'll pardon the expression, Marion, cojones that got into a, a wagon that wasn't designed to go over mountains, whether you designed it yourself or not, is actually immaterial. And then take off into the vast unknown on the other side of a mountain. And not only that, to then surprise the Cape Townians when years later you reappear over said mountains <laughs> going, I'm back, and you're not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh... It, it it was amazing. I mean, the most of the outbound journey, that route was known. It mm -hmm. had been traveled by others. Missionaries quite frequently all the way to Krikwistat, and then other travelers had gone further towards Kuruman. But that's where it had stopped. But it wasn't an established road. I mean, there mm -hmm. were there was a road of, of sorts, and uh, the mountain passes were really very, very difficult. But there were mere numerous parts that he traveled Right. where no one else had traveled before. There were no routes. So his little jaunt in, in the Kalahari, uh, that had never been traveled by anyone in a wagon ever. And so there were a number of pioneering parts of, of his journey. But yeah, and he went on his own. I mean, he didn't have a another uh, local inhabitant as guide, it, white inhabitant. He had the local truly, truly uh, amazes me. people. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and he learned to speak Dutch. Well, they, for an Englishman, not easy. Yeah. Um, Ma Marion, I know that you were the author of um, South Africa's favorite passes and ports. So did, no. did that happen before this? And did did Birchall then sort of, I don't know, become part of 
of passes that you either knew about or didn't know about. So maybe there's passes and ports too, the un, into the unknown. <laughs> David, I started on passes and ports when I was at Getaway Magazine, and uh, our first of my first book was Passes and Ports of the Western Cape. Ah, okay, and there are just so many. You know, you can plan routes that crisscross over the <clears throat> mountains, the Longaberg, and and the Otaniquas, and, and really have a good time. Uh, if if you like mountain passes like I do. But um, after that book came out, people were saying to me, but but you didn't include my favorite <laughs> pass. What yeah. about this? Or what about that? And and in other parts of South Africa, there are nice passes, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I sat down and I started traveling for and, and writing the second book, which was um, you know, More Mountain Passes. And um, I continued with that after I'd left Getaway Magazine. Okay. So, so there were mountain uh, passes, then more mountain passes, and then now they're going to be even more mountain passes. And then maybe <laughs> you can the go fourth on one and is, on. Yeah, there were passes along you along the way, we, 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 we amalgamated the, the Western Cape and, ah, okay. and, and the extra so, mountain passes into South Africa's favorite. Okay. Past. So just on that note, Marion, I'm I'm assuming that, that Roger sent you the manuscript and you looked through it and went, oh, I can fix this and make it readable, and then people will want to buy it by the by the box load. Where was there stuff that, that he sent you that you went, hang on a second, this can't be. Um, have we fact-checked this? And then it turned out to be true. Something that was Totally amazing. And Roger, I'm going to ask you the same question. So just you have a moment to think about that while while I put Marion on the spot. <laughs> Roger sent me drafts, you know, his drafts of the chapters, which was basically all the factual information. Right. And then, for instance, like in um, the chapter that, that starts the return journey, mm -hmm. where he leaves Litakun, the capital of the of the um of the but um, Roger, those were the Butlaping, yeah. Butlaping, yes. Yeah. We we had to check again, yeah. you know, what the current usage was compared with what's now, and um, so for for the first, I think it was two weeks of of that part of his trip into the Kalahari and back to Kuruman, we have some diary entries. Uh, copy of his journal from that period. He went on a little hunting trip towards Kuruman um, and, and back to Litakun. And we have his his journal. So we could go back to source material. Mm -hmm. And Roger shared all this stuff with me. So I could go through that. And then I could say, it was a lovely spring morning when <laughs> Birchall said it. Because Birchall kept records of the weather for instance you, see, I and, don't you know roger doesn't write that he says you know roger i mean virtual went from a to b a to b yeah i, yeah. I hear what you're saying because i don't think modern modern explorers do that because it's either recorded um on um on your phone nobody writes well not many people let me say it, not nobody men Many people don't keep journals anymore, so I don't know if if people would keep this sort of um, keep these sort of records going. Uh, but but kudos, uh, Roger, for finding it. So what was your um, aha moment with with Birchall? Well, I I think it was the whole issue of just the return journey and discovering that there was a journal that covered one month only of his return journey. Mm -hmm. There were no other journals after that. That really excited me. And in fact, I'm rewriting some, I'm writing something else about that right now. But that really just spurred me on and said, really, you know, if I got this, what else can I get to uh, reconstruct mm -hmm. and to actually identify where is every, what, where is each one of these stations exactly? And some I've got down to within about 100 meters as others wow. I've got to within, say, a couple of kilometers. Um, and then what happened when he was on those journeys, when, and trying to match his collections mm -hmm. with his journey. 
So that I really could say to anyone who's studying uh, the history of, of a particular plant, they can actually use that, that information now to go directly to within a very short distance of where he found them. And so I was able to match those. And then we found letters that he had written. Then I was put those into it, gave part of the narrative. And yeah, Marion is right. I mean, the, you can either say academic or scholarly, they both sound a bit pompous, but I have a particular right style of writing. And of all the articles that I've written, so it's about nearly a hundred now, they are all of that ilk and that mm -hmm. nature anyway. And I realized I needed someone who had a different, a different perspective and a different way of writing. And so I approached Marion and said, well, can you help me get this into a far more easily readable format? And uh, she did that and did more because she added her own perspective on mm. things, which was wonderful. Added the, those timelines, the short summaries at the beginning, uh, the what I call the bot the botany boxes, the little detailed it. And that so she added a lot of uh, additional information, and with that would spur me sometimes to go and do more research and find out more. Is there a specimen available or whatever it is? And so. The, the res it wasn't just research then write. We, I did the research, wrote it, Marion then looked at it in, from a different perspective, and then there was ongoing additional research that was required. And I'm very fortunate that I was able to access a lot of information that's at WITS. There was someone who was blown away by Birchall in the 30s, um, Helen Mackay, that's nine, sorry, 1930s. And then... Uh, I got hold of the the various uh, universities and other institutions where his specimens and documents are and developed good relationships with them. And they shared that information and uh, had copies made of his original material for me. Which is wonderful. And again, Marion, coming back to you, um, the work that you've done on the book is, is very special. And I, be I believe that you've now opened the demographic to, to both academics and those like me who just like picking up the book and reading it for the ripping story it really is. I mean, this was the Harrison Ford of South Africa. He just went boldly when, or uh, what is it, Star Trek? He went boldly where no man had gone before, or at least part of his journey. And, and you've encompassed all of that. So it can be used, as um, Roger was saying, as an academic work, if you want to look at the plants and the mammals and that type of thing, or if you just want to use it as a as a, a read, uh, as, a, as a novel, uh, just a nice, exciting adventure story. I've had um, a very nice comment from somebody that I know. She said that she bought the book because um, she felt it's, it's like Africana. You want that on, exactly. on your bookshelf. Yeah. And she just had, she, you know, she's just going to dip into it. And uh, she started dipping into it and and then she ended up reading it from cover to cover and she nice. says she's never done that before I with, see, that's what you want kind of... we've we've run out of time according to to zoom unfortunately and what i forgot to mention is that the book is published by one of my favorite publishers which is straight um so well done to them it's called virtual's african odyssey revealing the return journey 1812 to 1815 by roger stewart and marion whitehead who have been my guests today uh, Roger, Marion, thank you so very much for joining me here on In Conversation With. I wish you all the very best and uh, look forward to the next exciting adventure that, that you guys come up with. I don't know who it's going to be. You may have something in the planning, but uh, I look forward to it. Once again, guys, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Thank you, David. Thanks for and having thanks, us, Marianne. David.